getaway for the PlayStation 2. So many great memories from playing this back when it was released. A game that now rarely gets mentioned and when it does you'll usually hear the term Grand Theft Auto Clone or it's just a poor man's Grand Theft Auto as so many of its kind did and still do. When you first get your copy of the game you should see a sticker on the box with a 9 out of 10 rating from PlayStation Magazine. But when you look at other ratings you'll soon see perhaps PlayStation Magazine might have been a tad generous with that. But hey, other people's ratings doesn't matter, it's how you as a player enjoy and perceive the game. I remember it being so anticipated pre-release, so why does no one give it a mention these days, like many other classics of its time? So, let's have a closer look at The Getaway. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The Getaway is a single player action adventure game developed by Team Soho and London Studios. Released in December of 2002 in the UK and January of 2003 in North America for the Sony PlayStation 2 console. The game starts with lead protagonist Mark Hammond's wife Susie and kid Alex leaving their apartment in Soho, London. Unbeknown to them there is a car sitting across the road with the lead bad guy Charlie Jolson's cronies in it. They have been sent by Charlie to kidnap Alex, but when they confront Susie and Alex a confrontation breaks out and Susie ends up being shot in the scuffle. The noise from the gun going off wakes up Mark from the apartment upstairs and he comes down to find his wife Susie on the pavement in a pool of her own blood. This begins the game and the hunt to get Mark's son back. You'll soon find out that the start of the game plays a big role in the story. You'll have a conversation on the phone with Charlie while you're on the hunt to get your kid back. He informs you that you're a wanted man and the police are after you, and that you left handprints on the gun that killed your wife. This is when Charlie begins to blackmail you to get his dirty work done in hope of you getting your kid back. I won't give any more away in case you want to play it for yourself, but I did enjoy the story of this game. It really does make you want to progress to find out what is going to happen next. The lead bad guy, Charlie Jolson, is the typical baddie everybody loves to hate. You'll learn through character progression. He's the head gangster in London, has it all, a big house, fancy car, women, and to top it all off, he was in the National Front, a far-right fascist political party. What an absolute prick. There is absolutely nothing to like about this guy, which grips you in the storytelling to find out what happens to him. Along your travels while being blackmailed in the hope of getting your kid back, you'll come across two other gangs in the city of London. One being the Triads based in Chinatown, ran by Shan Chu Li. His businesses involve illegal immigration and heroin smuggling. Shan Chu Li, like every other gang boss, hated Charlie Jolson. The other gang, and also my personal favourite out of the gangs, is the Yardies. Based in Shoreditch and ran by gang leader Jamal, they are responsible for most of London's crack cocaine problems. Also heavily involved with arms dealings, they certainly do not mess about. The main game has 24 missions, but split into two different playthroughs. The first 12 missions will have you play the role of Mark Hammond, but the other 12 missions sees the story unfold as a police officer named Frank Carter that you meet in your first playthrough as Mark. I'll mostly be referring to Mark Hammond's side of the missions in this video. Frank Carter's side of the game seems more of a mini add-on, and you'll also know the outcome of each of his missions after you've played through the main story. You can breeze through his campaign in just a couple of hours. You control the movement of your character with a left analog stick. By pressing the X button you can do a roll manoeuvre which comes in handy while in combat. Which brings me to the gun control mechanics in this game. You will always have a pistol on you, but there are a couple of more weapons you can pick up from a dead enemy which includes a shotgun or an AK-47. Personally I try and keep the pistol as much as possible. The shotgun and AK-47 of course are a lot more powerful, but I feel you get more accuracy with a pistol, especially if you are dual wielding. If you do prefer the pistol and you pick up another weapon by mistake, 
don't worry just press the triangle button and it'll drop that weapon and you can go back to using the pistols again to draw your desired gun at an enemy you press the r2 button and press r1 to aim at a target and then press square to shoot I find this a bit awkward at times when there are loads of enemies on screen and also the camera angle isn't always your best friend in this game. You can't manually adjust the camera position like in most games these days so there may be times you walk into a room and you don't notice there are enemies in there until you're being shot to death. There is a covering system you can use while in a gunfight but to be honest I rarely used it. Although I found when I was low on health, blind firing while in cover did help a few times, but that was really it. The covering system is best used for the stealth missions and Frank Carter side of the story. As you may have noticed from the footage, there's no indications on screen showing you how much ammo you have or what your health status is. But out of the two, running out of ammo is the least of your worries. The health system on the other hand, oh dear god. Your health status is indicated by the way your player walks and the blood on the back of them. So, how do you restore your health you may be wondering? You lean against the wall. Yep, you heard me correctly. You lean against the wall until the blood stains on the back of your character disappear. This drove me insane as a kid playing this for the first time with my dad. I remember being blown away by the graphics and the cutscenes and it all looked amazing but we couldn't progress because we kept on getting killed. It was by pure luck just before we were about to give up. The player was standing by a wall, he leaned against it and we realised that's how to restore your health. It's not indicated in the game manual or nothing. I wonder how many people just gave up and never got to experience the whole game because of this. It's a huge drawback and even going back to play it again to capture the footage for this video, I really feel it slows down the speed of the game. You could be in an area with bad guys, you're hauling yardy ass, taking triads out one by one and naturally you're going to take damage. But you have to backtrack to find a quiet spot, lean against the wall what feels like forever and then go back to take care of the enemies. Also while on the subject of covering and health, look what happens here. I'm coming down this path and I started taking hits really badly, so I wanted to retreat to find somewhere to restore my health. And look, I'm pressing X to roll away from the action I just keep getting stuck to the wall, resulting in me dying. That almost tipped me over the can edge. Getting from A to B in the game you'll be required to drive a car. This can be fun at times but really frustrating at others. There are two ways to drive in this game. The usual being X to accelerate and square to brake, and using the D-pad for directions, which works great in most other games during this time, but I found it really stiff and awkward in this. But here's a tip that might work for you. I actually found using the analogue sticks a whole lot easier. Pushing the right analogue stick up to accelerate and down to brake in reverse, and the left stick for directions. So much easier to control and felt a whole lot fluent in movement. You can also nail some nice drifts using this method for going round corners a lot faster. With the only map included being the one in the game's case, there is no map on the screen so you can't check the best route or even have a waypoint, so you have to rely on the indicators on the rear of the car. This will and should direct you to the right location, but that's easier said than done. There were times I felt like it had me going in circles, indicating me to turn right so I did then rapidly flashed to go left. It just never made sense sometimes to me, and having a system that poor will never end well when you're on a timer based segment in the car. The game at times expects you to drive like a normal person, but will randomly indicate you to go down a one way street that most of the time ends in disaster. You'll be smashing into cars constantly which is really annoying because when you crash it feels like you're stuck to the car you've crashed into, obstructing your path. The cars don't take much damage at all, one or two crashes will result in your car rearing off to the left or right depending on which side took the most damage. Now, I understand and appreciate that we're trying to make this as realistic as possible, but this is a nightmare when you're doing a mission which is asking you to chase someone down or on a timer because you'll have to leave your smash vehicle to find another. Now, as much as I enjoyed the story and it kept me playing to see what would unfold next, there was a few inconsistencies that don't sit well with me, 
especially for a game trying to be as realistic as this is. There is one mission where you are told to go undercover into a police station to take out the leader of the flying squad. Now keep in mind as I mentioned previously, at this point in the game you are a well known fugitive on the run and you are just casually walking about a police station. No one even bats an eyelid and they even try and make conversation with you as well. Oh and don't go upstairs will you? Another instance of stuff not making any sense is towards the end of the playthrough with Mark. You're imprisoned in a cage underground and Frank Carter comes to save you and he throws a pistol into the cell for you to take before he breaks you out. Now watch this. That's good enough for me. Right, I'm going to blast this door. When I do, I'll elaborate loose upstairs. I'll try and cover you from up the hall. Take this shooter and try and get out. Remember the kid's still at Charlie's Gap, but you better hurry. Are you ready? I hope you know what you're doing. Don't worry about Carter. What the hell? Why go through all the work and hassle to add that bit into the cutscene, but then when you take control of the character, for the gun not to be there? As far as glitches go, I didn't come across many, but this did happen to me for the first time ever while playing this. I have no idea how to explain this, but I did manage to get everything back to normal, so I didn't have to reset the PlayStation, thankfully. But what the hell, honestly? The music in the game is really what you'd expect from a game based on London gangsters. Nothing really stands out, but now that I've said that, what will be noticeable and really, really get on your tits is if you're stuck on a mission and have to keep replaying it, like what happened to me during the mission in the police station. When you get to your objective, you'll hear this. And when you die, you'll hear this. Now imagine if you're stuck on the same level for a while and you have to hear this constantly, especially if the game screws you over like this. Such a pain in the arse that. As previously stated, the game is set in London, so expect to see some landmarks. Tower Bridge, King's Cross Station, Trafalgar Square, London Eye, Big Ben, they managed to cram it all into this title. Here's a little trivia for you also. If you're a fan of the UK TV programme The Bill, the police station in this game may look familiar to you. It is said the police station is built and designed around the police station from The Bill. Some of the environments you'll find yourself in through story progression fits the feel of the game, whether you're storming a warehouse and hope to find your kid, to the dark and dingy squats occupied by the Yardies. What the fuck is this thing? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Is it At the core of it all, it is a great game. As I stated in the video, I did enjoy going back and playing this. Although it does have its flaws, but which games don't. At times it is very, very infuriating, but if you can overcome these dodgy mechanics at times, I'm sure you'll have a great laugh. That was my review of The Getaway, if you enjoyed please subscribe, maybe leave a comment of uh, your past experiences of the game and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.